Good morning, Midway Church family. I'm so glad you're tuning in live with us this morning. My name is Connor Moon. I'm the online campus pastor here at Midway, joined with the awesome and geograph- geographically intelligent Leslie Fair. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little inside joke for... For last and, service, yeah, last service we were talking, and Connor, Connor's not good at geography, so um, there you have it. We're just going to end it with that. That's right. We'll just leave it there for this service. I mean, here's the thing. But here, <laughs> here's the, here's what you can do. I just encourage you. Okay, here's the thing. Before service starts today, and I'll be okay if you kind of jump off the stream for a second to go check it out. But there's this segment. Actually, maybe wait till after service. Anyways, um, there's this segment in first service where we just went on. <laughs> This crazy rant about geography. So, uh, go check that out. It's uh, it's, it's worth it on our YouTube channel. So. It will be worth it, and it's because Connor did not know where. Well, number one, you didn't know what state Detroit was in, but also you did not know where Fort Wayne was. Is that correct? Uh, well, it was Chicago. Chicago. Oh That's yeah, yeah, yeah. He did not like, know where Chicago was. That? So, if you want to see the bashing that he took after that. <laughs> I mean, I was getting roasted in the chat, like from here. But the sound guy, you could hear him laughing through the soundproof panels. It was, it was great. So, so go um, back. It's worth it. It's mm-hmm. worth it. But we're glad to be with you today. That's right. We are glad that you're in the house, and we're glad that you're watching. So um, come, be a part. Today, we're going to continue the series Beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a two, two sermon series, yeah. and Dr. Rev Kev killed it once again. Yeah, he he's knocked doing a great it out job. of the park. Doing a great job, Leslie. Why don't we? For, for all the new people who may be watching this morning, why don't we go ahead and share kind of what we do here at Midway and why we're hosting right now. Well, so, okay, here's the thing. Here's why the, don't you start? <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, my, <laughs> my, uh, so I'm the online pastor. That means that every when you're watching the stream this morning, my goal is to help you find a community and your purpose here online at Midway Church. So uh, if you go to midwaychurch.com, there's a button up there at the top. Uh, it's called Midway Online. So you can go to our online campus and you can find all kinds of things that are there available for you just in the online space. So if you're new this morning, maybe you're trying to find a life group or maybe you're trying to understand some events or things we have coming up, you can go check out our online campus there uh, on our on our website. So that's my job is I'm trying to help you find your place here at Midway. Yeah, that's not all you do. Um, yeah, I'm also the young adult pastor. So uh, we have a new, speaking of that, we have a new... Um, <laughs> Uh, young married life groups. We have several of them starting um, here, or we have two of them, but um, we have three available for you. So we have one that meets on Thursday, one that meets on Sunday night, and one that meets on Sunday morning. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, our starts this morning here in this service. So if you're thinking about joining a life group, uh, this is a season to do that. We have a ton of groups starting. So it's a great, great time to be involved. Why don't you tell them a little bit about what you do? Katrina just put a link for the online campus, so you're perfect. she's in in your That's corner Facebook, right? supporting you on Facebook. Yeah, yes, perfect. Um, I am the connections director. This is my 14th year at Midway Church. And the reason I keep saying, here's the thing, that's what Connor says. So here's the thing. I uh, I help you get connected. I help you find your life group. I help you. If you really want to break it down as to what I do, I'm Midway's concierge. I love that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I want to make that my title. So you, I help, help you find your way to the things that you're wanting to do here at Midway. That's right. So find, find me out there in the starting point area. If you are in the worship center, it is right outside to your right. I have a team of incredible volunteers, Amanda and Micah and Don Johnson, Paula Boda. I've got a just a great team that will help you get connected in whatever. Ask any question. If we don't know the answer, we're going to find it for you. So I'm the concierge of Midway Church. And that's also the case online. So maybe you're watching this morning and you see the little um, phone number scrolling through there at the bottom and you want to text connect. So you'll you'll be reaching out to Leslie. That's going to be the contact person for you to find, even in the digital space, some things you're looking for. So uh, we'd love to help you connect. And and we kind of want to talk about a little bit about how you, uh, you find the things you're looking for here mm-hmm. at Midway. So we have a ton of stuff available, whether that's going back and rewatching the sermons or maybe you're trying to find out a little bit uh, you know who we are here at Midway or events that are coming up all of that stuff is available on our website so if you're looking for events you can go to midwaychurch.com/events and you can find some of those things there so uh, there's uh, there's a ton of stuff available there right now we have a few things coming up one of those is growth lab Growth Lab Growth is coming lab. up. Yeah, that's uh, something that's happening in our online space, uh, but it's that. available to anyone. So it's going to be a Zoom meeting um, on the last Wednesday of every month this fall, and so all the way up until December. So um, 
it's, it's a, an opportunity for you to discover some of the, the spiritual disciplines that are out there that help us grow to be more like Christ. And so that's why we're calling it Growth Lab growth because lab. we're going to take a journey to grow to be more like Christ. So we'll meet, like I said, the, every, uh, the last Wednesday of every month, and we'll talk about uh, like a different spiritual discipline, whether that's prayer or Bible intake or, you know, um, serving, things like that. So uh, come be a part of that. That's on our events page. So you can click that and sign up there. So, I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be cool. It's going to so be interesting. So Katrina has put a link to our online campus and she's also put a link to the Connect card that comes straight to me. Yeah. If you're wanting to get connected, Rachel Baxter's watching. Hey Rachel. Had that baby. Rachel's got a pretty baby. Oh, okay. Yes. And you that's what you were doing this weekend, weren't you? You were you <laughs> Yeah, were I went to see my grandbaby. That's right. What yeah. is that? I go every Friday. Here's the thing. I'm going up to Chattanooga every Friday to <laughs> see my you. little baby Raya. Isn't that incredible. Yes, she's 2 weeks old yesterday. Yeah, Connor's going to be a daddy. Yeah, I've got, yep, yeah, November 1. November it's 1. It's coming. Yeah, it's That's why he doesn't know his geography, because he's right. all, he's got Trying that baby. Trying to learn all these things about taking care of babies. That's right. So You don't have to learn. They're going to, they, this is what someone told me when I was terrified, when I was about this, so this is 30 years ago, okay? Because Kate, well, 28 years ago. So I never babysat. I never did anything like that. So I didn't know babies. I did not do babies. And I had this sweet, sweet lady say, You've never had a baby, and the baby's never had a mama, so y'all will work it out together. <laughs> Same for you. That's incredible. You've never had a baby. You've never been a daddy, so guess what? Here it comes. Here's Journey the together. thing you're That's about right. to learn. That's right. Yeah, you'll it's be great. Gonna be, it's going to be fun and interesting. So You will be great. Hey, we Speaking got a night of, of worship coming up. Okay. Yeah, when is that? September 29th. Yeah. Right, Grace? Yes. 25th, maybe? 25th, maybe. Well, it's in there somewhere. we got a night right. of worship. That'll so, be under our events. Just go yep. to events and look. If you go to midwaychurch.com slash events, it's right there. Yep. Mid 25th. Yep, 25th. Sorry, I knew it was one. From 7 That's to right. 9, we got Growth Lab on the events page. Yep, August 31st is the first instance of that. And we have all of our life enhancement classes, which is whoop, whoop. I mean, on Wednesday, Wednesday night here is off Let's the talk chain. Let's about that for a second. Yeah. It's past Wednesday. It was off the chain. Was there incredible. were so many people. Guess what I got to do? Work what? in the baby room. Yeah. I was super excited about that. We had five volunteers call out. Oh, so wow. for various reasons, I'm not shaming anybody, but for various reasons, they were not able to come and serve in mm -hmm. their capacity on Wednesday night. So like the 911 call went up for us to come and help back in the preschool area, which I love doing. Yeah. And I got to hold a sweet little baby the entire time. I mean, I, she just stared at me. Like, what is happening? Who are you and what is happening? Yep. I picked her up and she was asleep like in two seconds and slept on me the entire time. So Perfect. that was for her mother to be able to go to grief share. Wow. So, yep, because and, and I was getting attached to all these kids because I knew where their parents were. Oh, that parent is in the anxiety class. Oh, that parent is in grief share. You know, so we have go to the go to the events page and look at all the fall life enhancement classes. And they've just kicked off so that they've done one week. That's it. Mm -hmm. So even though that some of these things are like 13 weeks or 14 weeks or whatever, they've just done one week. You're not behind. Yeah. Come in. Just started some of that stuff. And, you know, I've never thought about that perspective when you're when you're in there serving, especially in that area. And they're going to talk a little bit more about that here in just a few minutes. So stay tuned so that you can hear some highlights about what's going on in Next Gen. But, uh, you know, sitting there serving in preschool or elementary, and then you're looking at the perspective of mm -hmm. what are their parents able to do yes. right now when we're doing this. While I'm able to be back there with the babies, you know, I, I knew where their parents were. Yeah. So if, if it weren't for us serving in that capacity, mom would not have been able to go it's, to Greece It's share. much more difficult. It's, That's right. It's, yeah. And when you think about that's your job, it's you're there for the child, yes, but you're there for the parent to be able to go do what that parent needs to do for an mm -hmm. hour or two. Yeah, and it, it speaks to the how much weight we put on the life change that happens in that. Yes. In those, in those rooms, you know, like Grief Share is an incredible class where you get to, you know, walk with other people through some of that stuff, so... Uh, it just speaks to some of the significance that's happening there on Wednesday night. It's popping, too. There's a lot of things happening. It is popping. A lot of groups starting. A lot of groups, a lot of stuff. It is yeah, popping. a lot of cool stuff. Hey, happening. shout out to Rochelle. She's in the chat right oh, now. Oh, my goodness, yes. And on Facebook. Rochelle is in mine and, um, this is bad grammar, mine and Connor's life group on uh, Thursday. Thursday night. And she's had some health problems. So, Rochelle, so glad that yes. you are here. Yes. So, there we go. Good, good. Yeah, she, she's been battling some stuff, and I'm thankful that you're here this morning, Rochelle, she joining us. She's praying for Rochelle. Always got that spirit. She's going to keep fighting, so we, we love that. I think um, they're telling us again we got to go. It's time to wrap it up. It's time to wrap it's it up. Wrap What's it up. happening? we got to worship this week. So, um, <laughs> Kevin, you're in your infantry. Kevin's wrapping up his, his Beyond series, and our worship team, man, they... 
They killed it They're this morning. It They're today. doing a great job. So Baptism you, um, this hour, I think. Yep. Maybe. Yeah. Going to okay. be a great Sunday. So why don't you join me and Leslie as we worship together here at Midway Church. Stand to your feet. Let's go for it. Come on. I was very beneath my shame. Yes, I Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tune. It was my tune. Come on, we sing together and say, Till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. Yeah, you, yeah. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb. Oh, it was my tomb. Come on, say this till I met you. Till I met you. Are right, we shouting here? Here we go. You call my name. Your freedom is all that I know. Come on, the old man knew. The old man knew. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name. We said, Out of the darkness until. I need a rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter, I was an orphan, but you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healer, and your love is the air I'm breathing. I'm Out of the darkness into 
Amen. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. Thanks for being here online. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're pumped that you're here and we hope that you came expectant this morning. This is not a ritual or routine for the sake of that. We are here to meet with God this morning. And so show up, prepare for that, get your head, get your heart there. And it's gonna be an incredible day. We've already had a really, really, really good sermon from Pastor Kevin, and we're about to see a baptism in a few minutes here. So y'all buckle up, it's gonna be good. Everybody feeling all right? Good. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor. Make sure everyone has been smiled too. Let's be a friendly church this morning online. Let us know what's going on in the comments. How are you guys doing? Let's continue to worship this morning. This song is called A Thousand Hallelujahs. It's a new one. And uh, I just encourage you to sing along with us. Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine?
Great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? That the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross, yes. the cross has spoken. I am forgiven, the King of kings calls me his own, beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living, come on, will you sing this with me today, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the one who said me. no claim on that's right there's no claim on you there's freedom in the room can we sing this again then came the morning come on church oh yes your baby body began to breathe yes out of the silence the sing that one more time. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its You have broken every chain. Jesus Christ, our Come on, give him some praises. Amen, amen. Midway Church, please be seated. This is one of the most incredible moments that we get to experience as part of our service pretty much every week, and that is somebody coming into the family through Believer's Baptism. Amen. So I'm going to pass it to Pastor Ryan right now for this incredible moment. 
Thank you so much. Man, what a song to sing before baptism, uh, a living hope. And that's why I'm here this morning uh, with Allison. Uh, I met Allison in 2018 when she was a senior in high school. She came to the youth group and she was there every Wednesday, was very involved uh, up until graduation. And then uh, as she transitioned to being a young adult, she started serving weekly uh, in the preschool uh, with Crystal and doing a fantastic job there uh, with all of our other great volunteers who serve over there. And so uh, I remember uh, about eight months ago, I caught wind that she had prayed to receive Jesus Christ as her personal Lord uh, and Savior. And so I was super excited to hear that. So Crystal and I had talked with her and then today she has chosen to be the day that she would be baptized to show her faith uh, in Jesus Christ. So let's give her a hand this morning for that. If you're a family member or a friend of Allison, if you would stand uh, at this time. Allison, I have a question for you. Is Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior? Well, upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in the newness of life. Back to you, Kyle. Amen, we celebrate that and we just, Want to continue that through uh, this time of giving and we have many giving partners at Midway Church and we're thankful for that. But if you're new with us this morning, you can see ways to give on the screen and we're thankful for lives like that that get touched and we see the fruit of that through baptism. And we actually have an interview that we want to show you this morning uh, and they're, they're friends of mine, Scott and Amber, and they serve weekly with our, with our preschool and our kids and even had the opportunity to serve at VBS. So pay attention to the screen for a few minutes and hear their story. A family came in during VBS to drop off their 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 child, not my child, and I just scooped her in my arms and I kissed her on her head and I was like, oh my goodness, I just kissed her baby. I'm so sorry. I was like, but I just love her. I'm very attached. And they were like, no, it's okay. I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> we attended Midway several times because family was there. But one way that I love to worship is the music. And at that time, um, Jack Clifton was leading the music worship there. And that was something that I absolutely enjoyed. Uh, for me, it was Todd and his preaching. He just really preached what, the, what Jesus preached and what the Bible said. And... and I always feel like he's talking to us. He's just talking to us, being real with us, and mm -hmm. telling us, about Jesus. Serving at Midway um, began when we had our first child, Madison, and I started serving in the preschool area and started serving at the age group that she was. My kids are now upstairs. I remember the hesitancy that I felt dropping Madison off, but I remember the volunteers that were there and how they made me feel and how they made me feel so comfortable with dropping her off. The reason that I've chosen to stay in the preschool area is because I wanna do that for other parents. I want them to know that their child, their baby is gonna be loved just like they would be if they were with them so that they can have a peace of mind and go worship God and spend time with God. So I started serving a few years after Amber. I always wanted to be involved with the students, with the kids. Uh, I was just nervous. Her job is around kids, so I think she's a little bit more comfortable with the kids. And also just having as much knowledge. I feel like, you know, there's a lot of pastors and stuff in the church. They know so much about the Bible. I didn't, you know, feel confident enough to be in front of the older kids that would probably have more knowledge than I did at the time. But um, I took the dive and went into the third graders and just really glad I did. They just taught me so much and really just, I just found out that you just gotta love them and the church does a good job preparing you of, you know, different lessons each week. So it's been a great experience for me. And I do have to say, little. they love Mr. Scott. There's nothing better when a little third, fourth or fifth grader tells you they love you. So that's the best. He was at camp with them a couple of weeks ago, and I got that text message. He's like, one of the kids just told me he loves me. I was like, mm. yeah. I did get a little teary-eyed, because it was four <laughs> or five of them. It was after one of our um, 
small group sessions. It was our last small group session of camp. And probably four or five of them came up and gave me hugs. They all gave me hugs, but four or five of them told me they loved me. And I mean, they're just sincere when they say it, so. <laughs> and that I was their best friend, so that was awesome. Sweet. That's something I didn't expect, is to connect with these families and these babies and love them so much. Being a new Christian, I was just baptized six years ago, and it was a big leap to go into serving and to do this. One reason that I feel like I was comfortable and able to is because of the support team at Midway, the leadership team. I didn't realize how much they did and how much effort they put into it until I started. So I just want everybody to just tell them how much you appreciate them mm -hmm. and come give them some help. <laughs> <laughs> They're really awesome to work with. Yeah, let's give it up for Scott and Amber. They are incredible. I get to watch them serve every week. I got to go to camp a few weeks ago with Scott and just watch him thrive in a room full of bunk beds and smelly boys and late nights. And man, just to see the smile on his face every morning, knowing that he was making a difference. And I know so many of you in the room are Scott and Amber. So many of you guys pour in every single week to our boys and girls and our students in our Next Gen ministry. And we just wanted to take today and say thank you. Thank you because what you do is mattering. It's making a difference in the lives of so many people. And it's not just here at Midway, it trickles into the schools. These kids tell their friends about the love of Christ. They share Jesus. Last Sunday, we had over 350 elementary kids, over 200 preschoolers, and over 100 students on our campus. And that's just incredible. And it doesn't just happen. We don't just get to wake up on Sunday morning and hope that things fall into place. It takes dedicated volunteers who give of their time every single week, who wake up early, show up with a smile on their face, just to receive these boys and girls. And we also know what it does for the family. Many of you are sitting in this room right now while we take care of your kids in the back and there's a group of volunteers that are loving them so well because we believe moms and dads need a place to worship distraction-free knowing that their kids are getting the love of Christ so that you just get an hour to just be. But we wanted to welcome you guys. We always could use more volunteers. We would love for you to be a part. Maybe you haven't found your place where you feel like you belong yet. Come check us out. We would love, love, love to have you. We will give you everything you need to make a difference in the lives of these boys and girls or our students on Wednesday nights. Because here's what I know. God calls all of us to go beyond ourselves. And Pastor Kevin's gonna be talking about that this morning. And it's not always easy and it's not always comfortable, but he's gifted you with something. And so what we ask as a church is just figure out what that gift is and use it to impact the kingdom. Go beyond yourself this fall and make a difference. And our Next Gen team would love to help you find your place. After service today, we're gonna to be below the stairs. We've got some cards that you can scan and go and consider, or you can go online. Connor's gonna link it on our online so you can click there. And no commitments, no strings attached. Just check us out and see what you think because I promise you'll leave blessed more than you're being a blessing to others. But now we're gonna continue in worship. So if you'll stand back up with us, it's gonna be a great morning. So rich, I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. Sin separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you had me in your sight. Made a way across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne To build it here inside There 
at the cross you paid the debt i owed broke my chains freed my soul for the first time i had hope thank you jesus for the blood applied thank you jesus it has washed me white thank you jesus you have saved took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I Good morning, Midway Church. Hope you're doing well today. What a sweet moment. Aren't you glad that we can stand on the firm foundation that is Jesus Christ? Yeah, I want to ask our life group leaders that are getting commissioned to come join Pastor Luke and I on stage. Come on, we got some here. All of you come join us on stage. This is a special moment. You're about to see our whole stage filled with life group leaders that are either branching a group or they are starting a group. And today you've heard about the Gables Next Generation Ministry and how they have jumped in with our kids. And we're so blessed here to have an opportunity to unite all generations to go make disciples of Jesus. And Pastor Luke, leads our adult discipleship team. So thankful for you, Pastor Luke, and for all these leaders. And so can you give it up for them as we get to commission yeah. them? Pastor Luke, share with us. Yeah, thanks, Pastor Kevin. You know, this is an awesome opportunity. Some of you guys I've worked with a little bit more personally, uh, some less, but man, just thank you for your sacrifice and your willingness to give 
uh, of yourselves? Because I know sometimes when we're describing branching life groups, right, uh, splitting life groups, whatever you want to say, yeah, it's negative connotation. We say branching here at Midway. It's a lot like sending your kid to college. You know what I mean? Like you send them off and, and they're going to take on your values and it's going to be lived in a new context and it's going to be owned in a different way, but you still got that little feeling, you know what I mean, inside that you just got to let go. Yeah, and so the leaders here on the stage, more than half of them are doing that, right? And then other people are creating new spaces and new places at the table for all of us to come and experience biblical community together. And so the exciting thing is, if you're not in a group right now, now is the best season to figure out uh, a place or a time or a space. We do them all week at all different times for you to be involved. And man, uh, Pastor Kevin, I always called you Dr. Kevin. I don't know, Dr. Kevin, Dr. <laughs> Pastor Kevin. Worse. That's right. Um, Dr. Rivers, <laughs> I would concur with you that this is a great time to get involved in life group. So would you just pray and commission these guys and let us celebrate together? I sure would, sure would. You can call me whatever you want. I've probably been called worse, but... In your bulletin, in the room here today, in your bulletin, there's a story of one of these groups. The Halls, they're here with us, and so, so thankful for their story and for all the stories represented. I want to challenge you and yours to get in a group and to also consider going beyond your comfort zone and abilities. We'll talk about that in today's message to maybe lead a group. We've got so many people trying to connect. Maybe you're one. This is how we create space and seats for other people to find community. So let's pray over them, if you will. Extend your hands, if you're willing and able, and let's pray over them right now. God, we thank you for the leaders represented in these circles. These people standing on, st on the stage are more than just people who took a small step. They're people that really went beyond uh, what they felt probably capable of doing. Uh, their comfort zone was blown up, perhaps, by taking these steps, by branching. And when it had been easier just to turn inward and keep the group the same, they're saying, let's create space, make more seats to find the community that they have found in their group. So thank you for their boldness. I pray over them that same boldness, that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead would empower them, embolden them as they lead new groups, as those are launched in these coming days. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit power would go before them and with them, and that all of us, Lord, would step up uh, to serve, step up to find community, to go beyond our comfort zone, to engage in life groups beyond just being here on a Sunday, to truly do life together. Thank you for these who are taking that step. I pray your greatest blessings over every new group, some 10 plus at least that are represented here alone. We thank you for that. We commit them to you right now and commission them in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said... Amen. Amen. Can we thank God for these leaders as they exit our stage today? Yeah. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad to have you in the room. Welcome to all of you. Many new faces that are here. Good looking group of people in the building and also to all of you that are watching us online. We are so glad that you tuned in and we're looking at going beyond. You just saw some examples of Scott and Amber Gable taking a step to serve and go beyond their comfort zone. And that really is a word that God has stirred in my heart and in our hearts as leaders here at Midway that God wants to do something that's way beyond anything we could ask, think, or imagine, according to his power that works in us. And I believe that wholeheartedly over you in your own journey, because when we individually walk into that kind of a mindset, and that's really what we're building right now as we go into this couple of a week focus, is a mindset that is unified, that God wants to do more, that we think beyond our current boundaries and current limitations, that when we do that individually, collectively, what could and what will God do in and through our church? I say, let's find out. I look forward to those days ahead. And beyond does represent a mindset, but I'll tell you this, it represents, if I were gonna define it further, I'd say it's a frame. It's a way that we can look at our future 
together. You got any framing kind of moments, defining moments in your life that the moment that thing happened in your life, you saw everything differently. You thought about the future differently. I'll give you a few examples of those kind of moments for me. When I came to Christ, when I gave my life to Jesus, I was a five-year-old boy. I was a little bitty guy, and I still remember the moment that I put on overalls because it was an old-fashioned day at church, and they wanted a picture of the church's youngest member and the church's oldest member. And little shy five-year-old Kevin was the youngest church member, and I was scared to death of the poor little old 90-something-year-old lady that I had to sit by, and so I sat like this. (laughs) <laughs> and I was maybe frightened in that moment, but it was also a framing kind of moment because I look back at that and it was the beginning of a journey that changed how I looked at the future. So your salvation, maybe baptism. We had baptism today and it's a framing kind of moment that affects how I look at the future. It becomes a lens for how I see what God may wanna do in my future. Uh, maybe when you got engaged, where's Ryan and Grayson? Yeah, where are they at? There they are. Our student pastor, Ryan Edwards, just got engaged to beautiful, sweet Grayson. Let's give it up for them. I'm not gonna make you stand or anything, Grayson. I got your back. We celebrate that. These are defining moments, aren't they? It changes now how you look at the future. Now your engagement is a frame for what is next. Definitely the day you get married, perhaps. And all right, parents and grandparents, how about the day you have kids? That changes everything. Can I get an Amen. It changes everything about how you frame and look at the future. And that is exactly what we hope this mindset of going beyond can be as God determines, drives, clarifies our future as a church, that these moments can be building moments where we build on 175 plus years of amazing history to see what God can do. I wanna show you another one of my defining moments, framing moments. This is a picture of me over six years ago outside of our building here at Midway Church. Back when I was serving here, I had the the amazing privilege to baptize people outside right in front of our building. How many of you are here in March of 2016? This is Easter. This is Easter Sunday. Raise your hand. Lift it high. I would like to see. Yeah. You remember those moments. Many of you weren't. We're going to have a lot more of these moments. For those who weren't, some of you may remember this, but I want to show you my oldest two kids in the front. That's my two oldest. They're a lot bigger now, a lot taller, Caleb and Callie, 11 and 9 now. And I didn't see this moment until after Easter Sunday. My wife took this picture, and there I am baptizing, just celebrating these incredible moments on an Easter Sunday. What a neat moment that was for us. But when I saw this picture, it became a frame for me in that I wanted to make sure my kids would always be a part of a church that baptized, always be a part of a church that facilitated life change, that my kids would always be a part of a church that looked outward, that looked beyond our inward tendencies to reach people who are far from God, so that these kind of moments could be things not only that they would witness, but they, that maybe they could be a part of in their own journey as well. It was a framing kind of moment for me. And I'll give you the best frame of all, the best lens we can look to when it comes to our future. It's this picture represented in so many ways. He is not here. He is risen. The tomb is empty. Jesus is risen. Some of you came today to hear that. He is alive. We can proclaim it every Sunday. Every Sunday is Easter because we know Jesus Christ. And that's a frame for our future to go beyond. And I thank God that we serve that kind of a power. Those kind of framing moments can define where God will take us. And here's a verse. Paul said it this way, Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. Can I get an amen in the house? Woo, I needed to know that this day and every day. And as we look beyond, that's the frame for our future. So I wanna invite you to turn now to 2 Corinthians chapter five. That's where we started last week. No worries if you're just joining us. Uh, if you came today because you were invited, you're just tuning in online, you missed last week. Today's gonna stand alone, but I'll recap the whole passage that we're spending two weeks looking at, digging into together. 2 Corinthians chapter number five. We're gonna read verses 14 to 21. That's the whole passage passage. We're going to zoom in on verses 18 to 21 in our time together today. If you're ready for God's word today, give somebody a fist bump, high five, headbutt, something. Let them know you're ready. Let's dig in. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. The apostle Paul writes, 
For the love of Christ controls us. For we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Mm, that'll preach, but let's keep going. Verse 18, today's focus. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself, gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And I pray God takes the reading of his word and it becomes alive and active in our lives this week. Prayed that over you all week. And here's what we've looked at. Last week, I gave you the first of four foundations for our future, things that'll take us beyond. Here, here they are. Number one was beyond myself, beyond myself. Verses 14 and 15, it's the love of Christ that compels me. And because he died for me, I now die to self. Because he died for me, I don't live for me anymore. I live for him. So it takes me beyond myself. The second thing that we learn is that it leads me, the love of Christ compels me beyond my past. Verses 16 and 17, it ends with this concept that the old has gone, the new has come, and aren't you glad that in Christ you can be a new creation? No matter what the old may look like, I'm a new creation. That we serve, verse 16, a from now on kind of God. He is a what will be kind of God. If you miss the message on these two points, go to our app, Midway's app, or midwaychurch.com, catch up on that. But we're gonna build on that now by going to number three. Write this down. Number three is beyond my ability. Beyond my ability. Raise your hand if you have ever felt inadequate in some arena of your life. <laughs> I'm guessing that we can all raise our hand. You feel like God could never use somebody like me. I look in the mirror often and remember how I'm the worst and most difficult person that I've ever led in my life. And then I think, how could God use a knucklehead like that guy? So often. And there's a humility with that that's a good posture, but sometimes we get stuck in a false sense of that humility, and then we end up stuck in the mud. We end up in a rut, and we never let God do the things through us that he desires to do in taking us beyond our ability. So I wanna get real personal with you for a minute. We're here, we don't just wanna be hearers of the word. You didn't come today just to listen to the word of God. We wanna be doers of the word. And so to do that, we're gonna to have to get personal. So the personal question that I'd like to ask you today is simply this, in what way is your perceived inadequacy? I say perceived inadequacy because I believe the word of God is gonna transform how you see those inadequacies and what God can do in and through them. So the question is, in what way is your perceived inadequacy holding you back from taking a step of faith that perhaps God's been stirring for some time. If you don't know what that step of faith is, I dare you, I double dog dare you to ask him today. And I believe he's gonna show you something that maybe you never dreamed through your ability could ever even happen. And I would tell you, here's the secret to it, you're right. Through your ability, it'll never happen. But his ability is pretty limitless. And so that's what I want us to look at for a few minutes. And it all is culminated the foundation of all of it begins with verse 18. Verses 18 and 19, God does this work that we read just a few moments ago, but the first five words of verse 18 is all you need to know when it comes to going beyond your ability. Here it is, all this is from God. All this is from God. And in verses 18 and 19, I counted some seven ways, seven acts of God that just point to the fact that these are acts of God. It involves us, it involves what he's doing in us. But these things described, and I'll give you two frameworks that are described in verses 18 and 19. Number one is that God reconciles. 
You notice that twice it's mentioned in verses 18 and 19. God is reconciling us. That means he's bringing something back together that got separated. Because of our sin, we're separated from God. But God brought about reconciliation. He made it possible for a bridge to be built to bring us together in relationship with him. So God reconciles us through Jesus Christ. I sure am glad he does. That's the message that we get to be a part of building and perpetuating in our own lives. God reconciles us through Jesus. The second thing that we see in this passage God's doing is that he entrusts us. Two times in verses 18 and 19, it says that he gave to us and he entrusted us with two things, the ministry of reconciliation and the message of reconciliation. Both of those are in there. And so I wanna talk to you about those two things, but as we dig into that, you must start. Don't miss this. It's the most simple thing I'll say all day, but it's the most important, that all of this is from God. He does not need you or me. If it's all of this, that means he needs none of us. But the beauty is, even though he doesn't need us, he wants us. He invites us. He uses us. And that's the whole point of this passage. As we're looking at that fact today, remember that he wants you to be a part of his family, the body of Christ, the hands and the feet of Jesus as his son or his daughter. I'm glad to know that I serve a God who doesn't need me, but man, he wants me, and I get to be a part of his team. Two things that we see, the word ministry first. We're given the ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. This word in its original language is diakonos, and it's the word from which we get our word deacon. Deacon. And here at Midway, our life group leaders, you fulfill, we just commissioned them. They're fulfilling the call of this ministry of reconciliation in how they serve and how they accomplish the tasks of ministry. That's what it's talking about. It's the service, it's the tasks of ministry, it's the shepherding and the loving and the things that go along with that, the work of ministry. And we are given, and that's all of us, by the way, the ministry of reconciliation. That's the first part that we see in this list that that Paul gives to us. And here's what I want you to know. God, listen to me, you're gifted. You're gifted. You've got gifts. God has given you gifts, and God will use your gifts and sometimes channel those gifts or redirect those gifts to use you. But the beauty is, sometimes God will call you into something you're not very gifted to do. I'm gonna tell a little of my story today because that is me. I am the epitome of that story. And when that's the case, God will give you gifts. God will equip you to do what you are not in your own ability able to do at all to begin with. I often say it this way, that God does not always call the equipped, but he always equips the called. Sometimes God does call the equipped because you have gifts and he just redirects those gifts and calls you to use them for the glory of God, maybe instead of the glory of self or the glory of this or the glory of that. But God doesn't always call us because we're equipped, but he does always equip us when he calls us. I am a living testimony of that statement. Here's how, because I told you last week, maybe you were here, if you didn't hear last week, I told the story of how I had to give up something very special and precious to me. It was baseball as a 17-year-old kid. God called me to preach at the age of 17, but before he called me to preach, he asked me to give up something precious to me. It was a part of myself, beyond myself kind of moments, and it was baseball, and it was after that, so God simplified things in my life, and then he clarified what the call was that he was making room for to begin with, and that was to preach. But you gotta understand, I had a couple of stipulations when it came to following Jesus. You ever give God stipulations? (laughs) I did. I said, God, I wanna serve you. I'll do whatever you ask me to do, except, except, yeah, but I'll never. You ever use never, except, or but when you're telling God what you will and won't do? I don't advise you to do that. Watch your nevers. I said, God, I'll never be a pastor like my dad. Not because my dad was a bad pastor, but because I saw the bad that comes along sometimes with being a pastor. And I'm saying, I'm not doing that. Never am I gonna do that. The other stipulation is I can't speak in front of people, ever. And then God says, I want you to strap one of those things to your face and I want you to preach the gospel. 
<laughs> and I wrestled with God to no end on that. And it was actually a pastor that I didn't like very much. I'm gonna be honest, I was in the flesh, okay? It was at a youth camp, and every time this guy would preach, uh, I'd like, I need to go to the bathroom or something, whatever I had to do to get up and, and get out of that moment. But this particular time, as I'm wrestling with whatever it is that God's doing, I didn't know what it was at the time. In that particular moment, God did something in my heart as he described his call to ministry. And it's like clear as day. Said, you know, I asked you to step away from baseball. Here's why. I want you to preach. And I went, nope. But I knew, even though I said nope, in my heart, I knew things would never be the same from that day forward. I didn't know how, and I certainly didn't think I could. But God did something in me in that moment. And then things progressed. I started preaching. I preached my first sermon at the age of 17. And then God sent other pastors into my life. Uh, one of them at the age of 22, maybe you've heard of this guy. Uh, he was from Midway Church, and his name was Pastor Todd Wright. You ever heard of that guy? I like that guy. <laughs> and he poured into my life, and he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And he used this phrase frequently as he talked with me, and I had led some ministries and it overlapped with the Midway's ministries, just God lined things up so that Todd Wright would be in my life, pastor me, and he's pastored me over these last six years as I've been in Indiana as well. But he used this phrase, and here's, here's what it was. He would say, Kevin, I just see God's hand on your life. And if I'm honest, I never verbalized this, I don't think, back to you, Todd, but he would say it and I would go away thinking, I sure am glad you do because I don't see it. <laughs> but he kept saying it. He kept believing in me. And he kept seeing something that I couldn't see on my own. And I wanna give you two challenges with that. If you have someone in your life right now that does the same thing, that spurs you on beyond your own self-perceptions, that encourages you and pushes you to go beyond what you might would do on your own, I want you to do two things, an A and a B for number one here. A, I want you to thank God for that person. B, I want you to find that person. If you can't go find them in person, write them a note, send them a letter, write them an email, send them a text this week and tell them thank you because those moments are powerful. But for some of you, maybe you don't have that. Maybe you didn't think of a name that you can thank or thank God for this week. And what I would tell you is number two challenge, and this is for all of us, but especially those of you who'd say, I don't really have that in my life. Be that in the life of somebody else. Look for somebody that you can encourage and see things in them that maybe they don't even see in themselves and encourage them, spur them to think beyond their own limitations and boundaries and abilities and capacities because God may use your words to spur them on in a way that you may never even know the fruit of in your life. So I would challenge you with those two things and I thank God for the Pastor Todd's in my life and I pray and I'm committed now to being that in the lives of others because God doesn't always call the equip but he always equips the called. Another thing you can write down, don't miss this, is that God is far more concerned with your availability than your ability. God is way more concerned with how available and open-handed you are than how good you are at what you think he's calling you to do. God cares way more about you saying, here I am, Lord, send me, than you saying, God, here's my resume of all the ways I can be used for your glory. So guess what? That means if you feel inadequate, you are positioned and poised to be used by God in powerful ways, way beyond what you could ask, think, or imagine, because it's his power that'll have to do it. When I preach a sermon, I'm reminded every single Sunday, I try to start every Sunday at one point of my routine in the morning on my knees just to remind myself. God doesn't need that. I need that. I do that to remind myself of who I was and how dependent on him that I am. Every sermon I preach, I'm a living testimony of the fact that God does not need our abilities because I brought none of this to the table. But God chooses to do whatever he wants with whoever he desires to do it through, however and whenever he decides to do it. And that applies to you. It's beyond our ability. So we've looked at the ministry part. Let's talk about the message part. The ministry of reconciliation, the task, the service. Let's talk about the message part. In the original language, this is verse 19, the message of reconciliation. The Greek word is logos, 
for this, and here's why that matters. John chapter one, this is the same word that John used to describe Jesus. In John chapter one and verse one, where he says, in the beginning was the, say it if you know it, the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He's talking about Jesus, and this is the same word that Paul uses to describe what God has given and entrusted to us. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation, and the message of reconciliation. So it's the task, the service of ministry, but even more importantly, it is the why and the how behind how we get the ministry done. You could say it this way. Paul is saying, God has entrusted to you the Jesus of reconciliation. In the beginning was the word, the logos, you have been entrusted with the Jesus, the reason why. That word logos, it means speech or, or word, or in this case, message it's translated, but the Greek context that it was spoken into, it meant way more. It meant meaning, it meant logic, it meant rationale, so it described the purpose of life, the why behind the what. The why behind the what of this reconciliation thing that we're called to, the ministry of reconciliation, is Jesus, is his grace. And God has given to us and entrusted to us all of it. I don't know about you, but I sometimes think, God, what are you thinking? <laughs> Giving that to me. But that is what God has entrusted to us. And so who you are fuels what you do. I say it to you this way, don't miss this. It's our identity it's our identity that determines our ability. Identity determines ability. Let me explain what I mean. If your identity, if who you are, is defined by you, by your success, your abilities, and your capacities, then your success, your abilities, and your capacities are now the cap of the impact that you can have. Make sense? If I and my identity is defined by me and what I bring to the table, then what I bring to the table is the extent of the impact that I can have, the extent of the ability that I have to impact the world. But if my identity is rooted in Jesus Christ, oh, the same spirit that raised him from the dead dwells in me. If my identity is that, then my ability is no longer capped by what I bring to the table. Then the sky is the limit because the king and creator of the universe and his ability and his power now defines who I am and what he can do in me and through me. I don't know about you, but I wanna live that life. I wanna walk that kind of faith. This is beyond my ability. And so how does God see that role? Let's answer that question. I'm gonna give you three verses. How does God see our identity? How does God see my responsibility? Three verses. The first one's Romans 10 and verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 14, simply says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one from whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Important exercise. I wanna give you, so just make sure you're with me and awake for a moment. I want you to look at your neighbor, and they may give you a weird look, but it's okay. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them right now, tell them you are a preacher. Let them know. No, 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 don't say stop preaching at me. <laughs> let them know, you are a preacher. And because some of you don't yet believe that, let me give you the second verse. How are they here? Because we're gonna preach. First Peter 2, 9 says it this way. I love this, this passage. But you are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you, who? You, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. A couple of chapters later is what I often call my favorite leadership verse. It drives me every day. I try to lead with this mindset. First Peter chapter four and verse 10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received. Now notice, what was our first few words of verse 18 again? All this is from God. It's whatever gift you have received, not achieved, not brought to the table. Use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful, and man, this gets me every time, stewards of God's grace in its various forms. A steward is a manager of something that doesn't belong to them. And so we are managers of not my grace, but God's grace, the same grace that brought me from death to life 
Now I'm entrusted with the ministry of that grace, the message of that grace. I'm entrusted as a steward and a manager of the very grace of God. Wow. I don't deserve that, and I don't feel capable of that. It's a good thing all this is from God. We need him. So we steward the ministry and the message of reconciliation. That means God sees you as a preacher, as priest, as steward of his grace, as a part of the ministry. If you are a follower of Jesus, you are called to full-time ministry. It may not be your vocation like what I and a lot of our leaders walk into here, but you are called into ministry just like anybody who calls Jesus Lord. We are called into that. And then comes verse 20 where we're called ambassadors. Go to verse 20 again. Verses 20 and 21 gives us our last and fourth foundation for our future, which is beyond our comfort zone. Beyond our comfort zone. Number four, you ready to get uncomfortable, church? God's ready to stretch us, to grow us, to even make us a bit uncomfortable. In verse 20, it says, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. And then he says, this part always makes me just cringe just a little bit, if I'm honest, that God is making his appeal through us. (laughs) And if God is making his appeal through us, first of all, who's the us? The us is the hands and feet of Jesus. The us is the body of Christ. The us is his sons and daughters. The us is his church. That's us. He's making his appeal through us. And that tells me that if the grace of God is appealing, and boy it is, you know, entering from death to life sound appealing to you? Does to me too. Then that means his church should look appealing. That means in a world that's characterized by hate and division, we're called to be a picture of unity. We're called to be locking arms, not horns. That means that we are called, as God is appealing to people through his church, to look like Jesus. It's always interesting when you read about Jesus that sinners were always attracted to him. You ever notice that? He went to sinners, but sinners always gravitated to Jesus, and I just believe that's exactly what we are called to walk into. And this word ambassador, as we're looking at it here, if you look it up in a dictionary, it'll say something like this. It's an authorized representative in a foreign country. And it's interesting, the original language for the word ambassador is the word from which we get our English word presbytery, which is like ministers. We're ministers, goes back to the ministry and the message, the logos and the service of ministry. We're all called, church is a team sport that God has called us to play a key role in. Philippians three and verse 20 captures this so well. Paul writes about how we're citizens of heaven. But our citizenship, he says, is in heaven. And from it, we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're an ambassador of heaven. We are a picture of what heaven is gonna look like. And I say we should be practicing for heaven today. That's a good place to start as God's church. Can I get an amen? Man, let's do that together. And here's what that means. That means as citizens and ambassadors of heaven, that means our home and our hope are not built on anything temporary. Our home and our hope are not built on anything earthly. It's not built in any church denomination. It's not built on any pastor. It's not built on any mentor. It's not even built on any president or any nation that's gonna go away. It's not built on a political party. It's built on the king of the universe, the only kingdom that's still gonna be standing when all is said and done. That is our home. That is who we represent, and that is what we get to be a part of building on earth. That is our call of ambassadorship, and that means that the love of Jesus, this is where it gets real personal and hard. It's gonna compel us at times to go beyond our comfort zone, to love and lead and dig in with people who don't think like us, believe like us, act like us, look like us, or maybe even smell like us. The love of Jesus compels me beyond the bubble, the internally focused bubble that I tend to create on my own. And that is what Jesus wants to do in your life. And next week, I invite you back. We're starting a new series in the Gospel of Luke, and we're looking at just that. We're looking at how Jesus ate meals with people. There's 10 meals in Luke's Gospel, and we're gonna have some meals with Jesus. And we get a picture of how he invited people to the table, and we're gonna get uncomfortable, go beyond our comfort zone to be challenged to do that as well. I was challenged to do that when God called me from my comfort zone here at Midway over six years ago. West Georgia was home for me. Midway was home for me. But God said, I want you to go to Indiana, Fort Wayne, Indiana. 
And because I went to Fort Wayne, Indiana, God did amazing things in me that he couldn't and wouldn't have done if I was here for those six years to lead us and to write this very story that leads us to being together in this room right now. I didn't know it, I didn't see it, but he sure did. And because I and our family stepped outside of our comfort zone, God did something amazing in our family. Our family went from four to five. I wanna show you a picture of my youngest. This is little Miss Kaya Grace. She's a miracle. We have been on an adoption foster care journey for a while here in Georgia. God called us from Georgia to Indiana. Georgia to Indiana, we get connected with this lady in Michigan who connects us with an adoption agency in Kansas who ultimately God used to get us connected to this beautiful little child. And she was born in Illinois. Georgia, Indiana, Michigan, Kansas, Illinois, back to Indiana, and now back to Georgia. And it just hit me as I did that. I think that's seven. It's a number of completion in the Bible. I love that. <laughs> I've never even thought of that. Yeah. And Kaya was supposed to have medically inevitable uh, some big challenges with her health. She was born premature. She was, in this picture, she's about two days old. She was four pounds and one ounce. And the doctor said she's going to inevitably it's medically inevitable. She's going to have a lot of problems. Are you guys ready to walk through those problems? And we said, nope, but we're going to be ready. And you know, that little girl didn't cry one time in the hospital. She's had no health problems. She's grown and just doing an amazing job. But the main thing God has done through her, I hope we've poured into her life as parents, sure, but man, she's changed ours. But our family of five, this moment wouldn't have happened if we weren't willing to say, I'll take a step outside of my comfort zone. You never know what God might do in you and through you with one simple step. He wants to stretch you. He wants to change you. He did the same thing God did when he called us back to Georgia. Even though it's home, it was a stretch for us. It stretched us because that had become home. That's what our kids knew. And here we are again because God keeps stretching us. And here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying move. I like you guys, y'all should stay. But do what God says. He may ask you to change geographic locations or he may ask you to change your heart's location. He may ask you to change what you're allowing him to do inside of you. And so I wanna show you this picture. Here's a picture of what God wants us to be, rubber bands. I brought me a big rubber band. God stretches us. And this is a big flashy rubber band. Look at his pretty color. You can see it real well. Some of you and your abilities, this is you. You're the big, awesome, full of ability, ready to be stretched kind of Christian, right? And God will stretch you. And if you've ever heard Pastor Todd talk about rubber bands, one of the most memorable things I've heard him say is that, you know, when you stretch this, it'll never go back to its original form. Did you know that? It'll never be the same again. But here's what I know. Some of you tune me out because you're like, well, I'm not that rubber band. And you would say, no, I look a little more like that one. <laughs> not if this is you. I just want to make sure I included everybody. And God's stretching you too. And in fact, sometimes God stretches you so much that, ow, I'll do anything for the gospel. I don't want to hurt. And you feel like this, you feel broken. You feel like God could never use you. This is you. It's all I bring to the table. Still stretches, but I came to remind you that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. And our God specializes in both using broken things and putting broken things back together through this ministry and message of reconciliation and redemption that he has called us to, that he's called us for, and that he's implanted inside of us. So I say let's stretch and see what God can do with us. But all of that will begin if you're willing to let God stretch you. And here's what I want you to take home with you from the rubber band moment today and the welt on my hand and all of it, is that every time God stretches, he shapes. Every time God stretches, he shapes. He's remolding, remaking, and shaping you as he's stretching you beyond your ability, beyond your comfort zone. Every time he stretches, 
he shapes. So that we can embody verse 21. I want to show you verse 21 again. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 tells us that for our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin. Jesus left his comfort zone, the comfort of heaven, to become sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. That's the gospel. Jesus took our place. He was perfect, but he became sin. Why? So that we could take his place. We are sinful, but we become his righteousness. Not because of our ability, but because he left his comfort zone, gave us his ability so that we could become his sons and daughters. I'm gonna ask you to bow your heads and ponder that moment in your life. Maybe you haven't had that moment where you realize the truth of the gospel, that Jesus paid it all. And so what I wanna do is give you a chance to respond and ask Jesus to save you and for believers to answer this question, what step of faith is God calling you to take that may take you beyond your ability and your comfort zone? And then I wanna read something over us as a church that just declares the power of beyond over us. But right now, will you respond to Jesus as believers are praying, asking for your next step of faith? Will you just say, Jesus, if you don't know him today, say, Jesus, I need you today. I need you to save me. I need you to forgive me. I know you died on the cross. You became sin so I could become your righteousness. You took my place. I believe you're alive. Today I give you me. As best as I know how, from this day forward, I'm all yours. If you've prayed that prayer, the angels in heaven rejoice, not because you prayed a prayer, but because God has regenerated you, given you this entrance from death to life in this very moment, and we wanna celebrate that with you. And one of the ways we can do that, if you're watching us online, there's a QR code on your screen or a link in the description as you're watching right now. We wanna invite you to let us walk that journey with you. If you're in the room, there are gonna be people out the doors to your right, my left, and there's a thing we call starting point that'll just give you that point of beginning. People that wanna walk with you on this journey, will you let us do just that? And as our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I wanna read this over, it'll take just about two minutes to read over you as we tie our time together. This is something that I pray could just declare, proclaim, and claim what I know God wants to do in and through us individually so that collectively we can be the church, Midway Church, that God has called us to be. Here's what I proclaim over us today based on God's word. You will see the love of Christ compel you in new ways in this season. You're going to go beyond yourself because you are God's masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which he declared for you in heaven way before you were even born on earth. You are called to live for him. The old has gone, the new has come. God is taking you beyond the past to change how you see him, how you see them, how you see yourself in light of his love, grace, truth, and purpose for your future. God will simplify and clarify your calling as you boldly step beyond your past into a future only he could write. You will see God make all things new as he brings about his perfect will and plans for your life and our ministry together here as a church. You will keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of your faith, knowing that it is his ability in you that will carry you far beyond your ability as you simply put forth your availability. You'll lead with a stewarding mindset, giving out God's grace with no regrets and no excuses, no hesitations, because eternity matters and he will equip you for your calling even when you feel inadequate. Your prayers are gonna bring peace. Your faith is gonna shake mountains. Your words are gonna give life. Your hands will bring healing. Your feet will carry Jesus to a hopeless world. And your faith is gonna take you beyond yourself, beyond your past, beyond your ability and your comfort zone and everything the enemy desires to use to hold you back. You've got God's word as a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. You have God's spirit that raised Jesus from the dead as your power. You are an ambassador. God is making his appeal through you. He has entrusted to you his message and his ministry of reconciliation. You're empowered by God. You're trained through your trials. You're driven by his purpose. Your name is written in his book of life and your identity is in him. Because you are a citizen and an ambassador of heaven and earth is not your home, you're gonna live for the glory of God and not the applause of men. Because he who knew no sin became sin on your behalf, you are the righteousness of God. God will lead you to go beyond your comfort zone to reach people close to you but far from him. He will stretch and shape you as only he can do. God will do greater things in you 
through you and even through us as a church, Midway, that we could ever imagine in Jesus' name so that Ephesians 3.20 could be true of us. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And all God's people said, give God some praise as you believe that today. Pastor Chad will come close us. Wow. What a great thought. Thank you for being here today. We're excited about where we're at, where we're going, and really excited about next week as we launch a new series. Hey, two things I want you to know. If you're interested in our Israel 2023 trip with Pastor Todd and Pastor Kevin, who are both planning on going that, there's an informational meeting before this service next week. So you'd have to get here a little bit early. We've had a lot of people ask about that. We had had to pause that you know, through some COVID uh, challenges, but we're ready to open this trip back up. Uh, 2023, July uh, of that year. So if you're interested, next Sunday, 1030 in the Next Steps room on the corner here. If you can't, you can reach out to Leslie at midwaychurch.com. She could email you some information as soon as we have that document available. Last thing I'll share with you is we'll be doing some upgrade uh, here in our worship center with our ceiling over the next five to six weeks. They're going to be doing a section at a time as we try to repair this original ceiling that was here since back in 2000. Definitely needs a little bit of attention. So just be patient with us. It'll be cleaned up, obviously as you come back in, but you'll see a section that's worked uh, at a time may look a little different. Some of you will never know it even happened, and that's okay too. But for those of you who do, we wanted you to know what was going on. Hey, thanks for being here today. God bless. We'll see you back here real soon. Take care.